Thank you for tuning in to learn about strategic capital investment decisions, also known as capital budgeting. This is the last video of this series. Be sure to check out our previous videos. By the end of this short video, you will understand the basics of capital budgeting decisions and how they are made using different investment appraisal techniques. Capital budgeting decisions are used by an organization to evaluate long-lasting strategic initiatives. Some examples include building homes, roads, and buying businesses. The idea behind such initiatives is to provide additional value to different users. Capital budgeting is an important exercise for all types of organizations because it often involves large sums of monies. By evaluating tangible and intangible costs and benefits pertaining to an investment, organizations make sound and informed decisions. Decision makers base their capital budgeting decisions on the availability of funds, relationships amongst proposed projects, an organization's basic decision-making approach, and associated risks. All organizations are unique, so the process of making such decisions will vary from one organization to another. But generally speaking, the process revolves around four key steps. First, someone from within an organization comes up with a project proposal that defines its needs, objectives, and outcomes. This is followed by a screening process whereby a specific group of people within the organization evaluates the proposal and conducts due diligence. After such reviews are complete, managers decide whether or not a project will advance to the funding stage. Based on manager's recommendation, senior leadership approves the capital budget and the project moves toward implementation. When evaluating capital projects, management and senior leadership look at two key aspects, the tangible and intangible costs and benefits of a given project over its project life. While tangible costs and benefits can be easily and accurately quantified, it's important not to lose sight of the intangibles. Looking at both allows us to evaluate projects in a holistic way. Some decision makers rely on their intuition, but that's a risky proposition and potentially leads to poor decisions and a waste of resources and time. There are multiple techniques that help manage this risk. These include the Annual Rate of Return, or ARR, Payback Period, Net Present Value, or NPV, and the Internal Rate of Return, or IRR. When applying these techniques, it's considered best practice to eliminate all non-project related factors and analyze a project on a standalone basis. It's important to base decisions on actual and incremental cash flow while taking into account the time of such cash flows. Let's look at each technique in more detail. The annual rate of return, also known as the return on investment, simply compares annual income with the average investment. It's quick and easy and expresses income as a percentage of the investment. It indicates the profitability of a given capital project. Generally, the higher the annual rate of return, the better the investment. The annual rate of return uses accounting profit instead of cash to measure a project's performance, but it is the cash that's more important. This is where a technique like payback period comes in handy. Payback period is essentially the number of years it takes to recover the original investment. It's easy to calculate, and the shorter the payback period, the better the investment. The biggest challenge with both payback period and annual rate of return is that they ignore the time value of money a key concept when evaluating capital projects. Time value of money is a basic financial concept that says money in the present is worth more than the same sum of money to be received in the future. And this is true because money that you have right now can be invested for a return. Of course, there is always a risk that you won't receive the money in the future. Regardless, the time value of money allows us to compare future cash flows on the same basis as today's cash flows. We utilize this concept in two capital budgeting techniques. The first one is called Net Present Value, or NPV, which is essentially the difference between the present value of all future cash flows and capital investment of a given project. If the difference between the two is less than zero, then the project should typically be rejected. But if it's zero or more, it can be accepted. Generally speaking, the higher the NPV, the more attractive the investment. It's a widely used technique to determine the value of a business, investment security, capital projects, and anything that involves cash flow. The second technique that uses time value of money is called Internal Rate of Return, or IRR. It helps a company determine if it should invest in a proposed project by comparing it with the required rate of return, 
In other words, it's the annualized rate of return for a given investment, or the rate at which the net present value of all cash flows from an investment is equal to zero. By comparing the internal rate of return with the required rate of return, you can determine whether to accept or reject a proposal. If the IRR is equal to or greater than the required rate of return, then the project should be approved. Otherwise, it probably shouldn't be. Like anything, capital budgeting comes with its own set of challenges. For example, it does not take into account intangibles such as quality, safety, and employee loyalty. By ignoring such factors, we may eliminate projects that could be beneficial. Calculating intangibles can be complex, and there is no one way to quantify it, but estimating and incorporating these when conducting due diligence can be extremely valuable. When applying capital budgeting techniques, it's useful to not rely solely on one technique. It's also important to ignore past costs and take taxes into account. Additionally, when looking at cash flows, it is important to understand that cash flows can happen at any given time during the year, but for the purpose of capital budgeting, we assume that they only occur at the end of a year. At the end of the day, capital budgeting is one of many techniques that can help you make informed decisions. It's not the end-all be-all, but it is another useful tool in your toolbox as a decision maker. We hope this video has been helpful in understanding strategic capital investment decisions. Subscribe to our channel and find us on our socials for future tutorials. See you next time.